when this tree fell down, it knocked over another big tree over there, which knocked over another big tree over there. So when I went down here, investigated, there was a nice new tree. See, this one has, has termite damage, but the one down here, oh, come take a look. Oh, perfect. No cracks, termite damage, nothing. I mean, a couple of little tiny cracks right in the middle, but... And I needed some 24 foot long boards. It's like seven and a half meters. Uh, and it looks like I'll get both of them out of this one piece. Oh, that was a long cut. That's the longest cut I've ever done. I'll have to cut it right down the middle here because it's way too heavy to move. And then hopefully I can move those two pieces. Yeah, I'll do it somehow. If I have to tie a rope and just drag it an inch at a time, I'll get them somehow. Yeah, okay. All right, one step at a time. Lay this thing down. It's kind of stuck over there and then cut it down the middle. <sighs> oh, if we go down here, the third tree that went down actually got completely uprooted. It's over there. Yeah, I feel like I should start getting some of that old Egyptian beer that have all the calories. Make a pint of bread right now, that'd be great. Oh. Well, these are supports for something pretty big. So they need to be strong. I don't know what kind of wood it is, but there's not a single knot in the whole thing, and it's old growth wood. So it should be mighty strong. Now what do I do to get these out of here? Oh, this is going to be hard. Oh, I don't want to leave them here. I'm just going to have to move them later. Okay. Okay, I can move them. It'll take a while.
Okay, this is the tree I cut today. So it's the one that got knocked over by the one I cut yesterday. The one I cut yesterday only had dead leaves. I can't find anything identifiable. So hopefully I can look up, hopefully I can look up whatever this is. And when I cut it, like blood red sap came out. All right, Jamie, get a good look at that. See everything? Okay. And then the third tree that went down is not as big. So, but I should still be able to get a decent amount of boards out of it. Anyway, this is its leaves. It had browner bark. The difficult thing about identifying trees here is that there's like 400 different kinds of trees. And where I, where I lived before in Vermont, it was like 10 kinds. You know, this one's bending that way and that one's bending that way. So I'm thinking if I wrap a vine around here and at the other end, leave them for a few days. If I make it tight enough, I should straighten them out. Oh, this is the end I screwed up the thickness. The wind. like that'll get both curves out it's just supported at this end and the far end and they were going like that yeah let them dry like that for a couple days oh man it's way later than i realized the sun's going down uh don't start movie night without me guys i'm coming hey dolphins a few days ago when I was riding my boat, a dolphin came up and swam right beside me for a while. I pedaled as fast as I could, but it didn't look like he was struggling much. <laughs> I wasn't sure about this whole cutting the wood myself thing. And I think that's probably the biggest reason I decided to do it. Just because it's a challenge. It's difficult to cut all that wood and do a good job, blah, blah, blah. It's a lot of work. Uh, and just the second day of cutting and I'm feeling pretty good about it. The first day I had a headache at the end of the day, but today I uh, loosened the, the holder part on my ear blockers so they weren't pressing so hard. And instead of wearing the face shield with the thing tight around my head, I just wore like regular glasses. And I think that, I think just having that stuff pressed on my head gave me a headache after wearing it all day. Today was much better. And, uh, you know, I moved around a bunch of heavy stuff, got tired, took a drink, ate some food, got re-energized, yelled a little bit, and, uh, yeah, I'm feeling great. I'll do a bit of stretching tonight, and uh, I, I think this should go well. So today I got the two biggest boards I need for my, mega, my super mega project. All this wood's going into my, my super mega project. I'm not showing yet because I'm making a, you know, a mega movie, uh, so I don't want to show that. But I, you know, I figured I could show the, the cutting of wood. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna find a straight tree where I could get 24 foot boards. But man, that, that was really lucky. Well, I feel a little bit bad for the tree because it fell over and it was perfectly healthy. But you know, yay for me. Uh, Man, I got those two boards just out of a little side chunk of the tree. There's tons of that tree left. I can get 10 of those boards out of it. So I'm going to have a good week of cutting that thing up into boards. Man, it was a long tree, really tall. I went up to the top to find those leaves. And uh, it was a long, long tree. Uh, and it stayed, it stayed almost the same thickness the whole way up. It tapered a little bit. Not that much. Oh, probably in a week or two, I'm going to get tired of chainsawing, and then I'll go back to what I was doing before, because I have different parts of this big project I'm working on. I have to do them all. 
and it's kind of nice to break one up and you know do a bit of one then the other and then one then the other rather than just doing the same thing every day for months which I was doing man this chainsawing thing is such a nice break from what I was doing which is great I love what I was doing it was just every day every day the same thing okay uh, I'm almost back I gotta get cleaned up for movie night peace you know there's something else I want to bring up that I'm thinking about and it's something I've been thinking about ever since I was a little kid which is like where does all our stuff come from you know like living in North America you go to the store and pay money and you get all this stuff for like not that much money or at least we, we have a lot of money or whatever you know you, we get a lot of stuff not everyone has a lot of money and you know I grew up not wealthy or anything but still relatively speaking compared to a, a lot of other parts of the world I had a lot of money just not compared to the people I live near but whatever um, so one of the things I really wanted to do with my life was get get past all the, uh, the middlemen because a lot of the middlemen are like like children and stuff who are like forced to work in factories making our stuff for us or like people who just don't want to do it and are, are kind of financially trapped or sometimes just like literally threatened with death if they don't make the stuff for us and uh, in North America we don't see that all the time you know I mean we almost never see that unless there's like some documentary on TV and it comes up and people spend like an hour going, oh my gosh, can you believe that? Oh, we really need to think about things. And then they just go back to normal the next day. So I really appreciate the difficulty and the struggle that I go through in uh, you know, cutting my own wood out of the jungle, for example, and carrying it out myself, like, like taking a, a resource directly from the planet with no middle people in, in the way. It's something I really enjoy. Even though it's difficult. I mean, that's, I wouldn't even say even though it's difficult. I mean, that's part of it. Part of it is just like going through the struggle and the difficulty. Uh, I don't know, it's just, I think it's a really good thing to do. And it's a really good experience to have. And uh, I think it's also a good lifestyle. I don't think it's a good lifestyle when you have to do that kind of stuff because you know, financial pressure or being threatened or whatever. I do think it's a really good way to do things when you, when you get to do it for yourself. And uh, you know, in the culture where I grew up, we didn't do anything for ourselves. And, and it always frustrated me that everything was money. Like you, you get cut, oh, pay something for something and buy something to put on it. You know, you, you want to eat, go buy something. You, you, something's broken, buy something else. Or send it to the repair shop to get them to, you know, everything is just, all the problems are solved with money. And it's boring. Yeah, it's not, it's not fulfilling. It's not a fulfilling life. And like, and I had this experience when I, in my, in my last house where I lived. You know, I was living in that house and everything in it was stuff I made. And I could look at it and say, oh man, here's all this stuff, and I know what that tree came from, and I know where that was, and I know what I did to make these pipes do this. I lived in a, a big geodesic dome before. That was pretty awesome. I left it to, to move to the Caribbean. Uh, anyway, it's just really nice being surrounded by things you did yourself. You didn't just buy. Everything has so much more meaning. Like those two boards I cut today. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit it right now. I'm pretty darn proud of myself that I cut those boards myself. Yeah, that was, that was cool. And I got the trees right off my own land. Didn't even have to cut anything down. It makes me feel good. It's very fulfilling. Hard work. Good stuff. Don't thumb your nose at hard work. Don't look down on people who do hard work. Because, uh, man, hard work beats paying for stuff. In my books, anyway. Alright, speaking of hard work, let's crank up this motor. Yes, these were my white pants. 
Oh, I love this place.